everybody. My name is Giggles, and today I'm joined by our wonderful friend. You might recognize his works of Lily Madwip, which I voice in, and his name is Will Dolphin. You can also follow him on Twitter at WDolphin, and if you want to check out more of his stuff, you can also follow his Reddit. But anyways, we have a very, very special Q&A for him. It's his very first one. He's never done one before. Will, do you want to say hi? Hi, everybody. Hi, Giggles. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. We are going to start with the question portions now. So I'm going to read off the questions to you, Will, and then you will give your best answer. Will, what was yes. the inspiration behind the characters and what made you think of writing the story? Well, the, uh, the original idea behind the story was simply that I wanted to write something for no sleep. Um, as a test to myself to see if uh, I had the still the talent to to put something up there on no sleep that people would enjoy without simply uh, voting it up based on my name, because I had built kind of a reputation of writing on no sleep, and when you've got that kind of reputation, people will say, "Oh, I." Uh, I upvoted it and I'll read it later. And it's like, don't upvote something if you haven't read it yet. You know, you might not like it. Mm -hmm. So I decided to challenge myself by posting under a, a fake name that nobody would know and write a story and see if people liked it just for the story. Uh, so Lillian Madwip, I uh, generated the name because it's an anagram of my name. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, from there, I was like, okay, well, what do I want to write about? Because I didn't even have a story idea. idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, well, let's let's think about what people do. They often say, like, I'm a zookeeper, and you won't believe what's happening at my zoo. So I was like, I'm Lily Madwip. And, and then I thought, okay, what's what's so special? And that's when I came mm -hmm. up with the, uh, the idea that she sees things before they happen. And I thought, well, I'll go to, with the old uh, Greek myth of Cassandra who is a, a famous oh. character who uh, could foretell the future, but nobody would ever believe her. So Lily would tell people the future, but none of them ever believed her. And the first story was just her telling her brother that he was going to die and, and him not believing her. But it also played into that idea of, did she cause the events to happen mm. by knowing that they were going to happen? So... There was that kind of element to it as well. Um, that is so genius. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and, well, um, <laughs> it's great. It was supposed to be a one-shot. I wasn't planning to make a series out of it. It was just going to be a, can I write a story that people enjoy? Uh, but I found that I enjoyed writing it. I enjoyed the character so much that uh, the next day I thought, I'm going to write another story where she continues this problem of telling people that she knows mm -hmm. the future and nobody believing her. And then after that one was a success, I thought, you know what, I should, I should come up with an actual arc, an actual plot, uh, overarching plot to, to a whole series, and not just keep telling the same story over and over again of her trying to warn people of things and nobody believing her. So that's when that's when I really started uh, delving into the details. That is so cool. I like consider myself a really great story analyst person. And I never once like connected that it could have been inspired from Cassandra. And I see Cassandra things all the time. Oh, yeah. She's really <clears throat> uh, a popular myth. Yeah. But that was like so fun. Um, before you read my next question mm -hmm. to you, they have a couple of extensions. And the next one is, how long did it take you to think of it? Uh, I was literally thinking of it on the fly, the original story. I had mm -hmm. nothing, and I just started writing and letting my fingers tell the story on the keyboard. Um, it was kind of a, one of those things where, where you're, you're just writing what you're thinking as you think it, uh, <laughs> so. As we see with her many tangents, which is absolutely perfect in my opinion. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> kind of the way I think of things myself so it was very easy to write mm -hmm. and then there the last part of this whole question is what gave you the push to start writing it well i i kind of already addressed that it was it was that yeah. i wanted to challenge <laughs> myself uh i wanted to see if i could write something that people enjoyed without knowing who had written it 
I also made sure to make my uh, my my nom de plume uh, an anagram of my name, so that if it was successful, I could say, "Hey, it was me." And if people say you're just taking credit for someone else's work, I could say, <laughs> "That's literally my name there that you see." That's really smart. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, of course. All right, are you ready for a question? Yes, I am. All right, this is probably one you've heard before. Probably. What made you want to become a creepypasta narrator, and how did you grow on YouTube? Man, um, in the very beginning, I was so enchanted by narrators that are like now my friends, like Spike, of course, and then Creeps, and a couple of other people. Mm -hmm. And at first I was like just reacting to their narrations, which is like such a stupid idea. You know, it was just me sitting in a dark room listening to a story. You know, it was so boring. Um, but then at some point they started like um, Spike and I think Creeps, it might have just been Spike, but they started commenting saying, you know, you have a really interesting voice. You should try narrating. And so I said, well, yeah, sure. Why not? So I did. And What's really funny about that whole reacting to the creepypasta thing is that now I do see other people reacting to narrations and that like kills me because it's like such a boring video, but like people like it anyways. So it just makes me laugh. And yeah. I started growing or wait, the question is, how did I grow on YouTube? Uh, yes. How did you grow? Oh, man, I definitely think that having friends with more subscribers than me helped like in one area. But then the rest had to come from me. So I didn't really start seeing growth on my channel until I had a more consistent schedule, which is something that my acting mentor had been telling me for years before I should have listened to him sooner. But yeah, all the growing started from just being more consistent in my uploads. It definitely helps in who you know, to some degree. I've, I've, my father told me that a long time ago, and I've, I've learned mm -hmm. that over the years. Yeah, yes. but at the same time, you can't always rely on them either. And you shouldn't. You should no. be confident right. and dependent or independent also. Absolutely. You need to pave your own way. Yeah. It's just, you know, collaboration and independence. It's You got to find both of them. Yeah, and learn from those who came before you. Exactly. Are you ready for your next question? Yes, ma'am. Cool. All right. Are there any real-life experiences or people that have influenced your story, and what parts did they influence? Well... To a very high degree, uh, my kids influenced um, <laughs> a lot of the conversations that Lily will have. Um, I've always tried to talk to my kids like they're just little people, little adults. Um, <laughs> so we've, we'll have conversations about things that might seem a bit mature for their age. But, you know, then they, they come at it with this this naivete that, that's just adorable and so i've <laughs> incorporated a lot of that into lily um but for the most part a lot of the tangents and uh jumping around and just thinking of other things are just my own thoughts um so i <laughs> maybe some people have said she has uh add or something like that and i don't know if that's actually the case i just know that when i think about something or when i talk to people about something I'm often looking at the way it connects to other things and just thinking about how all these different things connect. Uh, I just find it interesting. So that's what she mm -hmm. does. I never took that as an ADD thing either. I just thought that that's how children and by extension, some adults think. I have yeah. thoughts like that sometimes. So exactly. makes sense to me. <laughs> Everything in the world is connected. You just have to look for it. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it. Shall we do one more for you and then one for both of us? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be really cool. Okay. All right. This is a multi-part question. Okay. First part. How did you get into narrating the story? For Lily, it wasn't so much my doing. It's more like Mr. Creepypasta found the video or video, <laughs> the, the story. And so I've said this in like tons of my videos before. He um, had two designated fellow female um, voice actors and narrators, and that is me and Autumn Ivy. So if he has a story that seems to be from the perspective of a more womanly woman, then he'll ask Autumn to narrate her. And if the character is more girlish and youthful, he'll ask me to narrate it. And so, of course, Lily is a little girl, so he tasked me with voicing her, and it was so fun to accept that and find her character. <laughs> okay. 
This isn't part of the question, but now I'm wondering, have you ever mm-hmm. done a more womanly woman character? I did, actually. Um, there was one story that I found on Reddit. It was a little too much for my channel. I try to make it at least, a, like, you know, no bad words, no intense, like, uh, violence or, like, uh, sexual elements or anything. Mm-hmm. And this story was just the smidges bit too sexual for my channel. But I was like, oh, what a fun, hilarious, great story, though. <laughs> so I pitched it to Spike. And he said... Oh yeah, I can do that um, for my channel. And but I told him, hey, you can say no, but if you do this, can I narrate it for your channel? And he said yes. And if I'm remembering correctly, it was something about how this girl had had a one night stand and had gotten pregnant with an alien's child, but it was like also kind of hilarious. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. so I did that. Nice. <laughs> Great. <All right>. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so the second part of the question. Mm -hmm. What was it about Lily's character that made you want to pursue her narration? This is the perfect question for me. I just thought she was so fun. She reminded me a little bit of myself as a child. Um, And I loved the premise. I loved the characters. I pretty much fell in love with your story, Will. And um, thank you. So we didn't know that it was part of a series, too, at the time. We thought it was a one-off. And I went back to look at your story just to read it while I was like listening to my own narration or something. And I was like, oh, my gosh, there's a part two. And I told Spike. And then now here we are. Yeah, seriously. (laughs) That was the same way with me. I I was not expecting there to be a part two. Uh, Third and final part of this question. Mm -hmm. From chapters written so far, which is your favorite? Ooh, chapters written so far. Oh, my gosh, that's so hard. There are so many good ones. I really like, um, oh my gosh, there is like one where I always try to method act the role to the best of my ability. So like whenever I'm reading, everything is a surprise to me. Um, Whatever happens around the corner, I'm kind of experiencing the story as Lily is experiencing her life. And Mm -hmm. there is one where that one chapter, it's very sad, but this is not a lie. It's the one where she finds out that her parents died. Wait, what? Her parents died? What? <laughs> sorry. What? I Go didn't ahead. know that. I'm sorry. No, you're good. No, you're fine. So when I had read that and, you know, I connected the dots in my head, I felt so bad for this character, which is so funny because, you know, she's not a real child. You know, she's like not a real person, but she feels so real. And we all know someone who's so much like her. And like, so when I started like bawling in that chapter, I was like actually crying. Oh, wow. But I love acting, and that was, like, the best way to, I guess, be, I think that's the rawest I've ever been. The most raw, the most authentic I've been in a chapter. So Mm -hmm. that's my favorite one. Oh, wow. Thank you. (laughs) Who is your favorite angel? Well, uh, that's a tough one. Um, So I like each of them for their uniqueness, but Mm -hmm. I think... My favorite, and this is, this is uh, I don't know if he's actually been introduced in the audio narration yet. Uh, mm. His name is Baratiel. Mm-mm. Does that sound familiar? Nope. Nope. Okay. So Lily hasn't uh, fallen asleep yet. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say on that. Um, his name is Baratiel, and he's going to show up uh, in this, in the Lily Mad Whip and the other knife that cuts the veil. Um, mm-hmm. but he's very much just a background character. Um, <laughs> and the thing of it is Baratiel is, uh, what is his name? He's, he's kind of, the, oh, <laughs> he is the angel of support. Oh. So, uh, I made him just this guy that people, the other angels are always like, Hey, Baratiel, go do this. And Baratiel goes and does that. And you only ever <laughs> hear them telling him to go do things. But That's he's so like sad. he's a, he's a little inside joke because he's the yeah. angel of support that he he just does things for other people. So when you hear him, when you see him come up, that's uh that's my favorite. Noted. I already love that description. As for me, I think this is going to be super basic, but my favorite angel is Pasher, just because mm-hmm. I don't know with like Lily like constantly like going down rabbit holes and like going on tangents and stuff. Um, at least the way that I've been like portraying him in voice is like very calm, the voice of reason, kind of like 
gives her a sort of center or more appropriately a totem that she can always circle back to and get reoriented or recomposed on. So he's probably my favorite just for all those reasons. But that That's might, might be entirely off of how I, I guess I interpreted him. <laughs> oh, no, no, he is, he's, he is very calm. Yeah, and I also like that he, like, sings to her. I think that's the sweetest thing I've ever heard. Aw. Yeah. Are you ready for your next question, Will? I am. Oh, this is a good one. Who was the hardest character to write? Uh, I'd have to say Hecate. Oh, Just yeah. because she is this eons old entity uh virtually a deity but at the same time i want to represent her as someone who was once just like lily um mm. but she has become this powerful witch queen uh that runs the the crossroads because that's one of the things that hecate is known for from mythology is that she uh lives at the crossroads that's another name for the veil is the crossroads. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to portray her as powerful and and epic, but at the same time, I I was afraid that if I she she's clearly you know got flaws and she was once a person just like Lily, but I don't want her to I didn't want to make her come across as as weak in any way mm -hmm. or you know I wanted her to be to be seen as a threat. Um, and I was, I was really worried that, that she would come across as anything less than that. Well, I think you pulled her off very successfully because she was real scary. <laughs> Snakebutt was scarier. Years. I think Samuel is, was the one that scared the crap out of me and the, the demon that, uh, Lily traps in the egg. Spoiler alert. He's oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't like that. That's spooky. Perfer. Yeah, Furfur. I couldn't remember his name for a second. <laughs> Chosen in part for the uh, adorable sounding way his name is. I know. I think there's a Pokemon that is also named that because really? it's like a dog, but it has like an extra letter like fur fur or something like that. Yeah, I'm pretty oh, okay. sure it's a Pokemon name. Well, now too. you know that dog is a demon. <laughs> yep. Are you ready for your next one? Yes, I am. Okay. This is another multi-part one. It's two okay. questions. What was your initial impression of Lily and the story as a whole? <laughs> what if I just said, like, oh, I hated it. Can't oh, stand that's, it. Okay. Anyways, no. <laughs> no, it's fine. No, I really loved it. Um, I loved the character. It was, like, my first time narrating something quite that long, though. So, mm -hmm. like, there was a part, it was just a simple learning curve, like, in the very first episode where I was like, oh, this is so long, I gotta go get more water. Oh, this is so long, I need to go um, to the bathroom. But, like, that was, like, it. I thought it was long, but, like, there's a reason why it's long. And oh, gosh. I liked it. And Super and yet, I keep making them longer and longer and longer. I am so sorry. No, that's fine. <laughs> that's, you know, if I if I complained about it, I wouldn't be that great of a narrator. <laughs> Honestly, the the first story uh, of her is incredibly short compared to everything else. I know. Collins. I was thinking that too. I was like, "Wow, I can't believe I was complaining about that back then." I don't even complain about the ones now that I have to do. All right. Second part: Was there any process or trial and error to figuring out Lily's voice changes mm -hmm. over the course of the story, or did it just kind of click for you? It was a little bit of a trial. Um... There's like this thing where a lot of voice actors go through it. You know when you're watching a cartoon and you go back to watch the first episode and you're like, hey, their voice is a little different. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the first like Homer episode. Simpson. <laughs> yeah, or like, I'm pretty sure there's a Billy and Mandy thing like that too. Something about the first episode. Um, well, the first episode I was trying to figure out not stereotypical little girl. I wanted her to be like a real little girl. Um because, of course, you know, if someone gives me a little girl character, my first instinct is, I'm a little girl and I love dollies and pink and bows, you know. But I was like, from the first couple sentences, I was like, oh, she sees the future. That must mean she's pretty miserable. So <laughs> probably not that. <laughs> um, so I guess the process was I wanted her to sound like a real child. So I kind of disregarded some of my own um, 
voice acting training, I've like taken classes and I've been taught under someone who did voice for anime as well as like, you know, like theater professors, film and TV professors, etc. So one of the big rules with voiceover is, you know, don't have dairy right before recording. But I was like, well, I want her to sound kind of phlegmy, like that doesn't bother her. And also mm -hmm. a little nasally. And let's just make her sound kind of ditzy, like she's in her head a whole lot. So I just kind of mixed all of that together and eventually just sort of got Lily Madwip's voice. Just kind of back here, kind of meandery, sort of youthful, but very well-spoken and well-toned and placed. So, yeah, that's kind of where I put her. <laughs> that was fascinating. I didn't Thank realize you. there was so much process into, into thinking about it like that. Well, in the first episode, I was still trying to f fully realize it. So, like, if you go back and listen to how I did her voice then, like, it's, like, kind of half the effort just because I'm trying to figure out how to totally be her. And then in the coming episodes, I fully realize her. <laughs> right on. Thank you. Okay. What was the favorite part you've written? I'm assuming your favorite uh, part. Yeah. <laughs> uh... I, I have two parts. Um, mm. I really like uh, my name is Lily Madwhip, and I think my dad is trying to kill me. <laughs> Just because it totally messes with people's minds right off the bat. They, they, they're thinking, oh, oh no, her dad is trying to kill her. But then, nope, he's just making her eat her vegetables. Mm -hmm. And everything <laughs> after that, everything after that is pure Lily Madwhip. So I just love it for... for uh, flipping the script on what people are expecting from the title. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the second one that's my actual favorite is where she goes to marry this house to save her from Felix and ends up passing out. And the next, the next chapter starts with her having a dream about a picnic and all oh, this weird, yeah. strange, kind of creepy, unpleasant stuff starts happening during the picnic. And the reason I like it is because originally the plan was that she was going to go to Meredith's house, face Felix, and have, like, this epic showdown. And then I thought, mm. no, she's she's a nine-year-old girl, and she's got, like, broken ribs and stuff. She's going to crawl into the room and just pass out and <laughs> completely miss everything that happens. Um, which <laughs> I've... Frankly, I think that's what would happen if somebody was in a huge car wreck and then raced across the, the neighborhood to try to save someone. So I would have to agree ev with you. Everything that you were expecting to read, the big epic showdown, you totally miss it because she totally misses it. And I just, I really enjoy that. I like that too. That's a fun, um, I know with like the fandom that some of my, some of my friends and I are working on right now. The author, very much like you, has this incredible habit of making a piece of writing lead up to something where you think you know where it's going, only to totally rip the rug from out <laughs> under you. And I love that, because it makes it unpredictable. And in that, there's like an element of so much fun. Yeah, I, I like to toy with cliches. I have spent a lot of time just scrolling through pages of TV tropes, just reading them <laughs> and thinking, yeah, I got to find some way to... To twist that and, and what's it called? Lampshade it. That's a good word. Lampshade it? Ooh. I might have misused it. I'm going to look it up now because <laughs> now my, I'm intrigued. <laughs> I believe lampshading something means uh, acknowledging the trope. <gasps> oh, I like that a lot. At least it's not gaslighting. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's some of that in the Lily Mad Whip, too, of course. Just a that's what, bit. <laughs> that's what Felix does. That's his yeah. wonderful gift when he's uh, powered up. I like his power. I actually really am fond of Felix because I, th <laughs> I just think he's such a goofy person. <laughs> Maybe that's the the voice that I gave him. But he was I supposed like to be so menacing. <laughs> they they told me to voice all the characters myself, and I was like, oh crap. <laughs> And that then was I was like, well, what if I make it one of those things where Lily is voice is like retelling the story to, you know, the audience. So she's making up the voices. So that's oh, yeah, literally absolutely. my voice for everyone else is Lily trying to do No, it's it. perfect because she is telling Thank the you. story to everyone. Yeah, she can make fun of him. She yeah. can make fun of Felix, right? <laughs> All right, one more for you and then one for both of us. Yeah. Okay. So I have to, I have to word this one a little differently because it involves the previous question. 
what was your initial impression of Meredith? <gasps> and was there any process or trial and error to figuring out her voice over the course of the story? So Meredith, for some reason, this was like totally wrong, but it was just like the first thing that clicked in my brain when I was reading about her. I thought of like all those like nerdy redheaded uh, cartoon girls with glasses. And for some reason, I have no idea why. I never knew like a redheaded girl with glasses when I was growing up. But for some reason, this like totally incorrect like version of her that I built up based off of a first impression in my head just made me think friend. And um, there's a word in um, Ilocano, which is Filipino, that is pronounced as kakaasi. And that means that they're so cute and adorable and out of place that you almost feel bad for them. So, like, that's <laughs> kind of how I felt towards her. <laughs> kakaasi? And kakaasi. Okay. Yeah, so I just felt really bad for her, like, ever since just reading about what she'd been through. And she seemed like a kind girl, but, you know, obviously she can get out of hand every, like, great big now and then. But I don't know. I liked her pretty much immediately, and I was happy that Lily could have a friend and that Meredith could have a friend that they could just build that together. Yeah. What do you think of each of the angels in the series personally? Like, do you consider them well-meaning but flawed, ultimately in the right, etc.? Uh, and furthermore, what do you think of Samael and the reasoning behind his actions? Interesting. Personally, like, I always gravitate towards angel characters. That might be because I'm devoutly Christian. Mm -hmm. But I also realize that, like, a lot of them have, like, Catholic versions of them. Or, like, even there's, like, literally, like, Jewish mythology, I think, that also has, like, different interpretations of them. Mm -hmm. So, like, naturally, I am always going to love an angelic character. I love the whole concept. I have some angel characters myself. As for your angels, I love all of them. I love how different they are. I love their powers, which I'm sure you've gotten from um, some lore from somewhere. And if you didn't, then good on you, because that's super <laughs> original. <laughs> But um, yeah. I like them, and I like that they, like, pick people to bless with their respective powers. Okay. I think that's really cool. And what do you think of Samael and the reasoning behind his actions? He's so scary to me, and I don't know why, because I shouldn't be scared of him, but I'm like, oh, he creeps me out so much. I don't know. Um, I feel like, well... I know that I'm scared of him, but as for the reasoning behind his actions, I don't think I actually have an answer for that one just yet. I'm still okay. figuring him out. Do you so <laughs> do you do you wonder about his actions or like the reasoning behind them? I do. It could I have a theory, but I don't know if like I'm committing to this idea yet. It could <laughs> be that he's just sick of how the other angels are doing things or how God is like running things or other pantheons oh. are doing things, so maybe he's like you know what? Screw this. I'm out. Dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something along those lines, maybe. Okay. <laughs> well, I uh, I actually have a little inside knowledge on, on his reasoning behind his actions, so that's kind of <laughs> cheating. Yeah, um, I was about to say. But uh, as to the angels in the series, I, I enjoy writing them. Uh, I enjoy giving each of them their own uh, minor personality because overall, I... Uh, I try to follow that they are very strict and adhere to what they believe in. So, like, they don't futz around with with uh, negotiating with, like, Lily and Meredith mm -hmm. and whoever. They have a purpose, each of them, and they follow their purpose. Um, almost robotic-like, but at the same time... Uh, then there's, I call him Pascar, Pasher. Uh, oh, it's it, it, it's it's all open to interpretation. Um, mm -hmm. He because he works with Lily because he works with the the knife that cuts the veil and uh, someone who is able to cut their carve their own path uh, in life since they see the future where no one else can. Um, he is a little more human uh, because he's while the others know what they're supposed to be doing, he can't always tell what he's supposed to be doing. 
because he doesn't know what the person, uh, what Lily is going to do. He can try to guide her and encourage her down this way or that way, you know, make the right choice. But he can't control her because of everyone in the world. She alone is able to make her own choice, basically, because she because she can see what it will do. Uh, and that, and thus, she can influence other people's choices. Yeah, um, what a unique relationship they've got. As for Samael, uh, he is doing his job. He was. Oh. He was tasked. <laughs> he was tasked with testing the limits of the veil, uh, which is considered a wall. It's like the last defense or the first defense between our side and the other side. And so his job is to con continuously try to break it. Um, as, a, uh, as a software tester, that's, I, I kind of am writing it from my own perspective. Other people give me, give me software and I try to break it. I try to find the bugs in it. So that they can make it stronger, so that they can oh. fix it, and make it harder to break, and that's what Samael's job is. And so he takes it very seriously, to the point that he can almost seem evil because what he does, everything he does, is to try to make sure that the veil is as strong as it possibly can be. So I'm not gonna lie, I was so <laughs> frightened uh, and focused on Hecate that I forgot about. <laughs> That oh, makes that was, way more sense. <laughs> that was kind of the idea too, was make you forget that oh. that is that is his area. He runs the show there. Or he did. He doesn't anymore. Yeah, yeah. Because Duma now runs the show there. Oh Duma. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he's scary too. You make some terrifying characters, dude. Duma's not that bad. He's <laughs> he's kind of a uh, a stiff uh Yeah, that's probably buttlery better. kind of person. <laughs> Like he try he tries to be comforting, but he can't because he just doesn't know how. You know, yeah. he's he's the angel of silence and death. So it's he knows how to kill things it. and he knows how to shut things up. He can't help it. He's just yeah. existing. <laughs> he, he just does what he can. The poor guy. Imagine you know, imagine him. imagine being like this the the angel of death and then suddenly being put in charge of a, a little nine year old girl to go. <laughs> kill another girl you don't know what you're doing yeah it's like know. yeah let's go, let's go kill her okay have you ever seen that sims meme about the grim reaper no it was like this will be quick i promise like okay. this one girl was playing the sims and she got one of them to like um die <laughs> so the grim reaper shows up but then another sim in the same house goes into labor and starts having a baby like right in front of the grim reaper and he was like freaking out so, like, the person took a picture of this hilarious screenshot of their sim having a baby and the Grim Reaper freaking out, and they just start going, this is not my job. This is the complete opposite of my job. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to have to look for that. <laughs> it was so good. Oh, there goes my drawer. All right. Are we ready for the next question? Oh, wait. There was a second part to this question. Okay. Um, it wanted to know what you thought of Furfur, -fur, even though we haven't known him for as long and don't oh. know much about him. I think he's like really, really terrifying. Like, like I said, I love angel characters, demon characters. Like, every time I have to like deliver some kind of narration that involves a demon, I get a little spooked from it. I know it's not like a huge deal, but like with my beliefs, I always say like a little prayer for protection and, you know, spiritually, mentally, physically, everything. So I'm scared of him just by default. Okay. <laughs> he's very well written. No, you don't have to keep saying that. I, I, I accept your uh, idea. It's the truth. Of it. Okay. Well, thank it's you. It's the truth. Of course. <laughs> um, what do I think of him? Uh, I think he is a manipulator. Um, he's a gaslighter. He can't be trusted. <laughs> uh, unless he's, except at the point where he has been captured and <laughs> and trapped, uh, then he is forced to tell the truth which i i got from uh studying uh looking up demons to see that oh this is how you would 
this is literally what it says about Furfur is you trap him in this in this uh circle and he will be forced to tell the truth. So that's what she has to mm. do. Because she read the same thing I did. <laughs> I wonder uh, where she got it from. But up till that point he's he's like constantly lying to the point where you don't know even even in his chapter where he's the one telling it, he's lying throughout mm. it. So that can be a little misleading for somebody who's trying to read a story to have an entire chapter of somebody just lying to you. So I I probably should have worked him out a little better in that regard, maybe not given him his own chapter. No, you made a really good unreliable narrator cuz I w there I was reading for him and I was believing him. <laughs> yeah. There were That's I mean pretty he, fantastic. there were elements of it that were true of course, but but he's you know, he lies like almost all the time. And he twists things, probably. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well okay. done. For real. <laughs> Are you ready for your next one? Yes, ma'am. Okie dokie. Alrighty. Did you see the series heading in the direction that it has? There's a little bit more to this question, but that's the first part. Okay. Uh, no. Because, <laughs> for, as I said, it was just supposed to be a, a one-shot. So uh, there was no plan. Um... There wasn't even originally uh, a plan for for it to actually be about angels. Um, hmm. Because if you read the first story, Pasker never says anything. It's always Lily says this about Pasker. Lily says that. Lily says that Pasker sa tells her this or that. Oh. Which makes you wonder, is she, is she just imagining him telling her these things? Is she actually talking with him? So it, it was supposed to be that you don't really know if she's if she's just imagining that this toy is telling her the future or if she sees the future and believes that the toy is talking to her. Uh, it wasn't until the third story that I was like, all right, now I actually need to come up with something so that I can <laughs> lay out a plot. And it's like, well, okay, the angels are real. The, this, the angel is really a totem. And there are more, and that's where this is going to go, is that she meets more people like her. Uh, so, wow. no, I had I had no idea that it was, and I had no idea that it was going to be as successful as uh, it's been, that I'm still writing it three years later. I've, <laughs> I've never written a story as, as successful as the Lily Madrip stories. You must feel so honored that everybody's like oh my gosh i love your story I love oh your story. god i'm very honored i i couldn't believe it like all the things that were happening when i first wrote it yeah, somebody getting created fan art and stuff fan art somebody created me uh my own subreddit for me to post the stories in like no. I just they just contacted me and said hey i made a subreddit for lily madlib like, oh my god you know, <laughs> now i have my own discord server yeah you do and now you're getting your own q a yeah and my own voice actress yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'll voice act to the nines for you. <laughs> okay, the next part of this question, you might have already answered some, but I'm going to read it anyway, just in case there's a I'm little bit more. I'm bad about that. No, that's okay. Um, okay. Out of everything that's happened so far, what is what was planned and what wasn't? And to what extent were planned events followed through with and deviated from? <laughs> I butchered <Well>. that. <laughs> The way I write is I, I have an idea of where I want things to go, but I let the characters lead themselves. And I know that mm. kind of sounds weird because I'm the characters, but I, I kind of have an idea of how each one would act. So yeah. when I get to a certain place, I don't force them to act in a way that I think goes against the way I've set them up to be. So as I said, there was supposed to be a giant... Uh, fight at Meredith's house in the first story. Um, Officer Flowers was supposed to show up. Uh, Meredith, Lily, and Felix all facing off. You know, four totem bearers in one room. And it was going to be like the showdown and that was going to be the end of it was they would face off against Felix altogether and finally understand who Officer Flowers was. Officer Flores. Um, <laughs> And and so that was the plan. But then, of course, Lily passes out. And I thought, okay, with Lily out of the out of the uh, picture, 
Felix would use his empowered gift to uh, manipulate the the fire starter and uh, deal with this interloper who had come to stop him because it wasn't really explained, but Officer Flores was supposed to be kind of like a, a, a bloodhound able to just track down oh. anyone, which is she was passing by uh, at the time that Lily discovered all the dead animals in her backyard mm. because she was hunting for Felix, but she didn't know who she was hunting for. That's part of the reason she just sort of shows up in places looking for she doesn't know who. Huh. Um, so that was the idea, but you never really get that because instead Lily passes out and Officer Flores dies. So <laughs> that's kind of how the story kept going was I'd start planning something and then the characters would be like, no, nah, we're going to go this way. And I was like, oh, well. I don't think that that's weird at all. I kind of do the same thing with um, the things that I've written. and. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously I'm not as great as you, and I haven't pr put out as much as I uh, have built up in my head. You probably understand that part. But, mm. like, whenever people ask me about God and, like, the idea of free will, I usually think, like, exactly what you just said. Where I'm, like, I think personally that God created free will. And, you know, there's, like, regardless of who you are or what you do, you know, there's already, like, an end that you're going towards in one way or another. But your means of getting there, like, God doesn't just make you, like, love him or he doesn't make you do this or he doesn't make you not do that. Like, you know, he lets you act in character and not something mm. that would be, like, ridiculous for you to do or not do. So, like, that's perfect that you just said. I, like, totally totally understand that and that's oh, like then, amazing to me then this latest uh series the, the other knife that cuts the veil must be rather interesting to you because it actually discusses that whole idea of free <gasps> will i don't know if you've gotten that Ooh. far again i'm not completely sure yet it's probably pascar, the next one pascar talks to her about about how it's like like following a path he talks about the word Okay, if, if you haven't gotten to the, where he where Pascar talks about the word, then I'm going to shut up because I'm spoiling things. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. You're doing excellently. <laughs> All um, right. do it's we... my turn to ask you a question. It is? Okay, I was just about to ask. <laughs> um, what's your personal interpretation of Lily on a deeper level, if you don't mind giving it, seeing as you're the one who portrays her a good bunch? My interpretation of her. Um, actually, it's so funny from what I've read about her up until this point. She reminds me of quite a few people in my life, but in a different aspect. To me, like the way that she's been described physically, she looks a lot like my best friend from childhood, who at this very moment is a married woman and is pregnant with her first child. Um, but she like, you know, this down to like the hair color and stuff and like just how she's been described physically. I'm like, she, she reminds me of my, my best friend, um, from childhood, but with my personality more like, or some element of my personality. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I've, uh, I've worked with kids ever since I was a child myself. Like I've always worked with kids, like since I was very, very, very young, I love children and a lot of key characters in my life that have always been someone I've babysat or I've worked with or you know I work at an elementary school right now they uh some of them really remind me of Lily <laughs> in some level whether it's like the way that they talk or the way that they change subjects or even sometimes just the way that they stand and just exist as themselves so with when it comes to interpretation I see her as one of the most real and relatable child characters that I've read in any piece of fiction. And I 100% mean that. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. That's my That's answer. That's a good answer. Thank you. <laughs> She's just very tangible to me. Like, I wanted to hug her <laughs> when I read that chapter when her parents died. I reached my arms out past the microphone and pretended to hug her in order to comfort myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Am I reading you question next? Uh, why don't we do one more for both? That's right. Ah, you're so good at keeping track. I'm not keeping track. I just thought I'm looking at the <laughs> questions. I was like, let's do one more for both. Well, you got a good eye for it. 
Uh, which one am I reading there? Oh, this wait. Oh, that's such a good question. Okay. If you could have a totem, what would it be and who would your angel be? All right. I've, I've actually thought of this one in advance. <laughs> uh, my angel would be Raziel. <laughs> Because I I like the idea of knowing people's secrets. <laughs> um, I like the idea. I I wouldn't use him for for the the empowered purpose of uh, making people believe what I want them to believe. Uh, just just knowing things that people don't want me to know. I just would really <laughs> like to, you know, because you I'm always going around wondering what people are thinking, and I'd love to be able to know that. And uh, for my totem, I'd have to make it my wedding ring, just because it's the only thing that I can keep track of. Anything That's else? Really I, smart. Anything else? I would just lose. I'm constantly <laughs> losing everything. It's so funny you say that because I was gonna say the exact same thing. I'd pick Rassio. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not so much like once again, not so much for like the like you know using it for a nefarious purpose. Um getting like not i won't go tmi but i will get just the slightest bit personal here i am a girl who my whole life guys have not liked me <laughs> and then like i grow up a little bit more in every phase and someone tells me oh hey remember so and so oh he had like the biggest crush on you and i'm like wise i don't believe it i'm not gonna believe it <laughs> until he comes up to me and tells me to my face that he had feelings for me and then like because of that i have like this hilarious insecurity that if I make a friend who's a guy, but I just want to be friends with him, I'm scared that he'll think that I like him, but I just want to be friends with him, you know? So it would be really handy if Raziel was my angel and if, like, I knew if he was like, oh, no, she likes me. <laughs> You're <laughs> or, probably not alone in that. Yeah, or, like, or you know, on the, on the flip side, if I did like a guy... I'd want to know if maybe he liked me back, possibly. <laughs> if, like, just sitting next to him, he would be like, oh, gosh, it's her again. Or if he'd be like, oh, she's sitting next to me. So that would be really handy. Not for, like, you know, gossip purposes or anything. Just to make sure that I'm not overstepping a line in what I think is a friendship, you know, because I can mm -hmm. be awkward sometimes. Yeah, I think also... my... Sorry. Oh, sorry? No, go ahead. You were talking. I interrupted. No, you're good. I, I blabber, blabber on and on. <laughs> so do I. Go ahead. <laughs> I think for my totem, it would probably be, this is going to sound so millennial, it would probably be my phone or my laptop. I spend a lot of time with both, but I carry around my phone most, and I've never left it anywhere. I'd be devastated if I did, so probably that. You're right, that does sound millennial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you. It's like you know me. Yeah. Alrighty. See, Lily wouldn't the... have that. Lily wouldn't have that option because she's not set in this time period. I started wondering that. I was like, I wonder if she takes place closer to the '90s. Yep, early '90s. Uh, yeah, basically I like 1990. Because like I was born in the '90s, and I mean I was very young when it came to an end, of course. But like I was raised with a lot of elements from the '90s, and I recognized certain words that I'm like, children do not know what that is today. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, this probably takes place in the past. <laughs> yeah, a lot of a lot of like the songs that she listens to or sings to herself. Yeah, are straight but, out of those times. Like the fact that she calls them still lives, and then. I could maybe my brain is making this up. I'm pretty sure she mentioned something about like what is the word for like that thing that makes marbles? A tumbler, right? Uh yes, I think so. Yeah, she I'm pretty sure she mentioned that like very, very briefly in like one one chapter. And I was like, kids do not know what that is. I barely <laughs> know what that is. So I was like starting to connect the dots very, very late into the series, probably season two, when I was like, I don't think this takes place in the late, in the in early 2000s. Yeah, it, de it also it, uh, protects her from the idea of, well, why doesn't she just pull out her cell phone and call somebody? They, they yeah. didn't exist. They did not yeah. exist. No, that's fair. My parents didn't trust me with a cell phone until I was like in high school. Yeah. And that's this is why she goes to... Uh, the Winslow Library because there's no mm -hmm. internet. She does. There's no in, oh, uh, public. I didn't think of that. <laughs> access to the internet. All right, moving on. <laughs> moving All on. right. <laughs> okay, next one. Was there any point in the series where you genuinely weren't sure with your choice for the narrative or the characters? And if so, what did you do? 
Um, all the time. Yeah, there was a... <laughs> I'm constantly second guessing myself. Uh, part of the reason that it takes so long between chapters these days is because, for one thing, I have to go back constantly and make sure that I'm not contradicting myself from something I wrote two years ago. Um, mm. And for another thing, I'll start writing, and I'm, I am my own worst critic. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, I guess I'm not my own worst critic because there's literally a whole subreddit called Shitty No Sleep dedicated to being my worst critics. Oh um, my gosh, that's awful. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> it's fine. People are welcome to to hate it, but uh, when I'm writing, I'm my own worst critic. And if I finish writing a chapter, I go back and I reread it, and I'll think. This is slow. It's boring. You know, nothing's happening, and I'll I'll start completely from scratch, or I'll just grab the parts that I like and start writing from there. So it's it's a process now to really write a chapter. Um, and I've I have scrapped entire chapters, like ten pages mm. worth of writing, because I got to the tenth page and just thought this sucks. I don't like this. I don't like where this has gotten to, and so. You've never read those. You've never had to read them. You don't know what happened. There was, you know, people had a conversation, something bad happened, but it was so uninteresting or made no sense. Or it just, it just, the flow was all wrong. So I got rid of it and started over. Man, meanwhile, there's like people who comment on my channel. They're saying, hey, I love Lily Madwip. When is it going to Netflix? <laughs> <laughs> I still have to make. I still have to uh, compile it into a book. I oh, for a second, I, I thought you were saying, "Oh, I still got to get back to them on that." <laughs> no, no, Netflix has not reached out to me. Netflix, if you're listening, uh, I'm really bad on Pick following through on things. So, <laughs> it's your uh, your choice if you want to try and contact me. <laughs> but that's like still you. You said that you ha you're trying to compile it into a book. <gasps> I've I've had so many people say I would love to have a book of this it, that I need to uh, finish what I'm doing and uh, put out the first series as a book. Yes, I will be at the top of that list for the pre-orders. I I don't want to make it something where it's just the exact same story in a book mm -hmm. form. I mean, it would be that story, but I'm adding things to it so that it's you. I I just feel yeah. like. Why pay for something if you can read it for free online, you know? So Yeah, I no, give, that totally makes sense. I want to give people something more than than what yeah. they would get online. Yeah, oh my gosh, dude. Absolutely. That's that's a great idea. Yeah. You are I'm validating you right now. That's a fantastic You're idea. very good at validating me. Thank you. Of course. It's my spiritual gift, I think, encouraging others. <laughs> you ready for your next question? I am. All right, I need to make sure I'm looking at the right one. Were there ever moments where you were surprised by Lily and or felt the need to change how you were portraying her in any way as the story progressed? Well, like I said, um, very, very, very late into the uh, entire series as a whole, I started connecting the dots. Oh, she's not a modern child. <laughs> she's from possibly the 90s which was my initial guess i'm glad that that was ballpark like pretty much right yep so i had to like you know i didn't know for certain but i started definitely thinking oh man should i adjust my voice to fit how they spoke back then more i was only five when the 90s ended and it became 2000 Jeez. so i was thinking well no because it's already like pretty much in a season two i should keep it consistent to how her voice has been this whole time. So I don't want to say that like it changed me or changed my voice, but it definitely changed the outlook or the portrayal just by the slightest in terms of like tone, mm -hmm. you know, and like casually mentioning something. Yeah. So, you know, of course, since she comes from the nineties, if I mention something like dial up or whatever, um, that's from that era and not as common in our current era, I'd have to know that it's not like, ironically, that I'm talking about it. It's like 100% Lily is dead serious about this thing because that's <laughs> just what there was. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you ready for your next question? Yep. One more for each of us and then another for both. Sounds good. Okay. 
Oh, I like this. <laughs> Did Giggles' portrayal of Lily ever influence how you wrote her? I don't think so. Yeah, That's my actually, guess. you might find this interesting. <laughs> It okay. it did, um, <laughs> I'm I forget exactly when it was, but I mean I've always known about your your uh, religious nature, but Thank I noticed you. I noticed in one of the videos as I was listening that mm -hmm. I had written a certain word, and <laughs> you didn't use that word. <laughs> and I'm I, so sorry. No, it's fine. And I thought, oh no, you know I, she can't she doesn't want to use that word because it's probably you know, against her religion, or she just feels it's kind of uh, sacrilegious to use it. So I have since tried to avoid using that word um, because I didn't want to put you in a position where you had to uh, try to find a different way to, to say what was being said. So there have been several several times where I started <laughs> to write something and I was like, oh, no, I don't want, I don't want to make giggles have to, have to <laughs> either say that or... or avoid saying that i don't want to make her feel like she's changing the story uh so i just didn't do it so yes uh your portrayal has influenced how i've <laughs> that's hilarious because i know exactly what you're talking about because <laughs> i started realizing he hasn't typed in that one word for a long time i wonder why <laughs> <laughs> But, like, whenever that word did come up, I usually just substituted it for a different bad word that, like, I deemed was less bad to say. Yeah. <laughs> but that's hilarious. I didn't know that, that oh, you yeah. did that. Yeah. Thank you. But also, like, if you did have that, it would have been, like, fine. Not to be you confused know? with uh, the chapters, the recent chapters with Meredith, where she's constantly bleeping things out. Mm -hmm. um, that's just Meredith. That's what she does. <laughs> That's cute. I like how you constantly keep track of that because I I don't think I've ever noted that down mentally about Meredith. That's yeah. Know. They each have their own personality. Yeah. It was actually Ready to going tackle to tackle one for both. It was actually oh, going. No, it's okay. It was actually going to lead to a point where Lily was going to finally see Meredith again, and mm -hmm. Meredith was going to be swearing up a storm. And mm -hmm. Lily was gonna be like, "What? What's going on?" Because you know, Meredith had, Meredith had gotten used to being around Roger, but nope. The oh. characters the characters completely changed how that was going to. So that uh -huh. didn't happen. But yes. Uh, moving on. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. You're great. Am I reading the next one to both of us? No, nope, it's you... my turn. Okay. <clears throat> Which character, aside from Lily, is your favorite? Oh, that one's hard. Wait, you answer first. What? I gotta oh. think about it. <laughs> I was hoping you would answer first so I could have time to think about it. Oh, darn it. Um, We've come to a standstill. Hmm. I'm going to say Felix. <laughs> I was just thinking about him too. Stop stealing my answer. Haha. -ha. <laughs> well, I, t I told you that it was your No, turn. okay. Well, since you, <laughs> since you say you were going to say Felix, you go first. So my favorite character is Felix. <laughs> Damn it. Um, no, I like Felix a lot, and I I liked voicing him through Lily's, you know, like, I guess reenactment of him just because I thought it was funny, but that he was like, you know, there's he's so complex. He's such an interesting person. I also actually really liked, um, oh my goodness, I'm blanking on her name, oh, okay. Snakebutt. Yes, Snakebutt. Is that her name? <laughs> Didn't she that's, have a different name? She did have a different name, but that's what everybody knows her as, so oh, we can just say hello? Snake Butt. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, no. Yeah, I can hear you. My internet just pooped again. <laughs> All right. Resuming. Resuming. Okay, you I were going to really say liked... Snake Butt. Yeah, what was her name again? Her actual name? Oh. Snake Butt. Oh, gosh. She. I, whenever I think of that chapter, I just think of Hecate, which is, like, so sad. I I'm actually blanking on Snake Butt's real name. <laughs> no, that's okay. I'll just say that um, I did actually really like oh, Snake Lamia. Butt just because of Lamia. Lamia. Yes. Lamia. Yeah. No, you're right. Oh, duh. That like that literally means snake. Like like lower half snake. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that makes so much sense. Um, I did actually like her because I liked the voice that I gave her, but I also just thought she was so creepy and 
I don't get to play a lot of creepy characters because I always get picked for the little girl characters. So I liked her because I thought that she was a good exercise, even though I do love playing the good guys and the heroes. I thought she was really fun. Also very scared of snakes, but she that didn't deter me from her for some reason. Oh, noted. More creepy characters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but then I also kind of like um, David Clark, as weird as it sounds. That is weird. I, you know, him and his sad fire eyes. <laughs> He's like a sociopath. I know, but I think, um, I don't know. I liked uh, that for some reason Lily just remembers him as like, oh yeah, it's that boy with sad sapphire eyes, you know? Yeah. And I don't know why. He just sticks out to me so much for some reason. I like him. Okay. And I love Meredith. Wait, wait you're just listing everybody. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, you're not. Okay. <laughs> So I like Felix uh, for the same reason, because he's complex, I think. Um, I liked uh, taking him in the second story and showing what he would have been like uh, if he'd had a less tragic life, uh, oh, the, yeah. the death of his son. And especially when he realized that if he helped Lily with what he believed, she what she believed, because he believed that it was reality, where because he was a creation of it, um, that if she were able to change things, he would be he would lose his son again. So he tried to prevent that. So uh, mm. I just I just liked how I liked how complex he was. I also like just just one more uh, Roger for the same reason <laughs> uh, for the same reason that he is a, a complex character. He may not seem it when you first meet him and he dies. And then when you see him again in the second series and he just kind of shows up and acts like a punk. Uh, but in the third series, you will find that there is a lot more to him. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, he's a he's definitely um, a fun one. Ever since he was in that the veil, I was like, oh, you're here. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yep. You ready for your next one? I am. All righty. Do you have any other stories that take place in the same universe as Lily Madwood? No. All right, moving <laughs> on. <laughs> I, I, I have been toying with the idea of, I, I don't know if it'll spoil anything, but I've, I've been toying with the idea of writing another series uh, oh. with Roger, uh, kind of a, a buddy cop comedy involving Roger and uh, someone else. I won't say anything more on that because it's just a, a thought at the moment. Well, let me know if you do that because I got a good handful of male voice actors who would love to be Roger. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. All right. Are you ready? Always ready. You probably answered this one a hundred times, but... Okay. <laughs> how do you record your voice for your narrations and post them for videos? I have a microphone. <gasps> you're not just a yeah. voice in my head i'm your tulpa everyone i've been will's tulpa this entire time oh i'm not God. real i just exist in his head that's why my no, kids keep coming like, down and wondering who i'm talking to <laughs> dad who are you talking to i don't know <laughs> but like yeah i have like a home setup i got a microphone a mic stand an interface and everything and then i just edit and yeah that's it's anticlimactic, but that's the magic behind it. Mm -hmm. You might add that you use <laughs> Audacity, apparently. So that yeah, that's help. true. I, I just told uh, Will Dolphin to download Audacity and record so that we can put our recordings together for this video. But yeah, that's true. I use Audacity. Yes. It's the best free system. Free software. Are we reading one for both of us, or am I going back up to you? Let's uh, read one for both of us. Okay. It's my turn now, right? Yes, I think so. All right. What or who is your favorite monster, killer, possessed doll, or demon in horror? Oh, in horror in general. That's easy. Boogeyman. Mm. Oh, I, wow, I, really? Yes, the Boogeyman is my favorite. Uh, there was a story <laughs> by Stephen King in his series uh, Night Shift called The Boogeyman, and I read it when I was little, and it scared the crap out of me. 
like <laughs> nightmares and just the idea of this thing shambling out of your closet that kills children like stuck with me for so long that i've i've mimicked it to the point that uh you know ono in C- mm-hmm. series two is the boogeyman <laughs> she is, or the boogie woman she was another one that i really liked voicing her snake butt and hecate i was like oh what a fun group yeah i think for me my favorite killers i have two i'm a big fan of wes craven Oh, and great. oh my gosh he's amazing my two favorite slasher killers would obviously have to be ghostface and freddy krueger i love freddy i think he's so funny but he's also terrifying but yeah those two have got to be my favorite they're just so fun with how they they like freak people out and then kill them yeah freddy krueger's fantastic he's oh, yeah. definitely my favorite slasher uh, villain yeah, he's just so much fun, and like he, it's which is great because he does like all these awful things, but he's just so much fun. Yeah. Are you ready for your next question? I am. Yes. Cool. <clears throat> is Meredith immune to fire started by her or all fire? And if so, does that mean she's immune to heat, like lava or boiling water? I actually saw this being discussed <laughs> on my Discord recently. Um, <laughs> She is immune to fire started by her. Oh. she That's part of the reason that she is burned is because she didn't start the fire that burned down her house. Uh, Felix did. Mm-hmm. And uh, so she got burned and her, fa- and her family died. and But she thought that she did it, which is why she's kind of morose and sad when we first meet her is she believes that she killed her parents. Uh, but she later, it's later found that it was actually Felix. And that's part of the reason that Officer Flores is hunting Felix is because she suspects that he's the one who set the fire. Which, of course, is never explained, so now you know. <laughs> <coughs> no, that's, um. I kind of was assuming the same because I thought that I had read in one of the chapters that she started getting heated but like she wasn't burning herself or like, you know, there was never a mention of like her hands being burned. Right. So I was thinking, huh, I don't think she burns herself. And when Lily (laughs) takes her totem, Lily doesn't, isn't affected by the the fire that Lily creates. Mm -hmm. Uh, However, throwing Meredith into lava will kill her. (laughs) She is like the one ring in that regard. Let's throw this tiny child into an overflowing volcano. Sounds good. Yeah, there she goes. My goodness. Bye. <laughs> All right. Uh, ready? I was ready before I was born. Oh, wow. Jeez. <laughs> Do you have a favorite scene in the story or even a favorite line? Something that just makes you giggle mm-hmm. when you read it. There's a couple of lines. Um, of course, I'm blanking right now. I think some of my favorite scenes are like the entire chapters that are from a different character's perspective. Or like, you know, um, Meredith is like, oh, sorry, Lily, I'm writing in your diary. I'm really stressed out right now. I got to go by. <laughs> yeah. I love those. They're probably my favorites. Oh, Meredith was fun to write. Oh, I'm sure. She just seems like such a, an adorable, nervous person. <laughs> but then there's, like, lines where Lily, like, says something like, um, it's incredible to me as an actor because, like, of course I want to do the best that I can in doing justice for your work and your writing and your characters. Mm-hmm. And there's some lines where you write, like, oh, like, um, my mom is an executive. She executes people. And, like, when I read that, I thought it was so funny, but, like, I totally picked up what you were putting down. <laughs> so I was like, I know exactly how I'm going to say this line. Straight It's, like, faced. little things like that where it's like, uh, oh, yeah, my mom does this. She seriously does that, which I think um, helps with my history of, like, having worked with kids so much. Because oh, that's, like, how they would say that. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like kindergarten cop. Oh, yeah, totally. have, you, have you ever seen the scene in uh, Kindergarten Cop where he asks the kids to tell them tell them what their, their mommy and daddy do or what their daddy does? And there's like oh, the no, two... Oh, no, I'm so sorry. There's the like, two twins, and they go, 
Our mom says our dad is a real sex machine. Like, just straight faced. <laughs> You're like, oh. What okay. did he mean? What did he mean? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. That's what the kids said. That's what they, these two oh. little girls said. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, yeah. and they just. <laughs> to their teacher. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times kids at the school that I work at will say, you know, some kids know things and then other kids have absolutely no idea. And then they'll be in the same group talking and one of the ones who knows will like say something, will drop, you know, the S word and I'll be like, it's a nope, we're not talking about this right now. <laughs> yeah. But that's like hilarious because that's so real. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kids will kids will parrot exactly what they hear. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Do you want to do one for both of us or go back up back to your uh, Let's do one for both of question. us because we got two for both of us left and one for me left. Okay, sounds good. So I'm reading this one. Uh, I wonder why this is actually for both of us. Will there hmm. be a season four of Lily Mad Whip after this? I'm going to answer. Um, w Will, why, why don't you take this one? <laughs> no, no. What, what, you, you go ahead. I asked the question. I was so going to say go yes. <laughs> uh, yes. There you go. Oh, I knew it. Yeah. I'm, I'm still toying with the... Uh, the specifics of it um right now the the idea i have for a title is a little morbid but it's a uh, lily mad whip must die i think that's fine okay <laughs> <laughs> there's people people are going to come at us with that meme of the dog sitting in the house that's on fire saying this is fine oh i love that meme as a uh, software engineer I, I have that actually <gasps> up on my wall that's perfect. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Are you ready for your Well, last... you didn't answer the question. I said yes. Oh, well, okay. You were... That's right. <laughs> you did answer the question. Yes, I'm ready for my last question. All righty. Will? Yes. What inspired you to choose Angels as a major player in your story? Um, I find Angels mysterious. Uh, mm -hmm. there's just something about them that, that they're in, you know, obviously all this literature, but their, their, their purpose and intent is never the same. And from what I've understood of them, they just seem like the perfect, uh, celestial being to, to toy with and come up with my own idea of who they are what they're doing, why they're doing it. You know, so I I get to take all of these ideas of angels from the different religions and uh, stories and such and take them and use elements of them, but make it be a thing like maybe this was passed down, uh, just a rumor about how angels are. This is what the, you know, what do they actually look like uh, for the longest time? Mm -hmm. I I wanted it to be kind of mysterious that maybe they maybe they look like bugs, you know, maybe they oh. aren't maybe they aren't uh celestial beings, maybe they're alien in nature, who knows. Um so that's that's part of the reason. That's the big reason why I chose angels. The other well, the smaller reason was because they have all these fantastic names and powers and I just <laughs> I was like, well that's what I want for for this little girl. That's a good answer. Thank you. I know I definitely appreciate those. <laughs> All righty. So I got think two more for oh, you. Yeah. yeah, we should get those out of the way and then end on the one that's for both of us. All right. What has been your favorite chapter to narrate and favorite character to voice? I think I answered the favorite chapter one. Oh yeah. With um I love the the one where her parents die, as bad as that sounds, because the acting is so raw, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I also liked, um, this was a more recent one that I did. It's the one where, I just said it also, um, where Meredith is writing in Lily's diary, telling her what happened. Oh, yeah. I thought it was hilarious, and I was, like, having, like, um, a really good time reading that whole thing. Mm -hmm. As for a favorite character to voice... <clears throat> I like the character voice that I have created for Lily, and I like, by extension, you know, the 
voices that I've made up for her to reenact for like Felix and for the Detective Guthrie character and for a bunch of other people. But I think I actually have to say it all comes down to Lamia or Lamia mm-hmm. and Meredith. I think, like I said earlier for Snakebutt over there, like um, I don't get to voice a whole lot of villains and I, I'm okay with that. I like being the good guy. I like being the ingenue rather than the vamp, but she was just really fun, a really fun visit from that. And then with Meredith, um, I tried to put more of my theatrical training into her when you're on the stage and there's a bunch of heavy lights on you and there's like hundreds of eyes staring at you and you know that that back row has to hear you, you have to speak with very wide and loud vowels. So I liked putting that into her because for some reason I just decided that she would be a little more open and a little more wide in comparison to Lily. Um, Almost as if she's trying to be heard more, whereas I feel like Lily is like, I'm going to talk and they're never going to hear me. Um, So yeah, Meredith is probably definitely way up there with my favorite characters to voice. Okay. <laughs> so the last one is to both of us. I don't know if you're going to be able to answer this one because I don't know how you don't read the, as you said, you don't read the chapters in advance, right? No, I try to always read them with Lily. I mean, that's probably not the best thing. That's okay. So you know what? I can take a guess. All right. Um, <laughs> and I will try to avoid spoilers as well for uh, people that only listen to your narration and don't read the uh, the stories. This okay. question is, what do you think is in the lake's box? I think it's Rick Astley doing the Rick roll. Wow. That... <laughs> okay, spoilers, that was it. So. Oh shoot, sorry, I'll just bleep <laughs> no. everything out in um, post. <laughs> I'm just going to say uh videotapes. That's Are they it. American Psycho? Video videotapes, that's all. I I'm, oh. I'm not saying anything else. Anyone who's read it Hmm. Anyone who hears it later will know it's videotapes. Okay. Yeah. Keep that in the mental safe. Yeah. <laughs> Lock <laughs> that away. Yep. Just put that in my back pocket and pull it out <laughs> when it's relevant. <laughs> okay. Well, dude, we just completed your first Q&A. How do you feel? <sighs> Relieved. How do you feel? Yes. I feel fantastic and exhilarated, but also kind of hungry. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you just got home, right? So it's probably dinner time for you. I was eating salmon the whole time. Oh, okay. <laughs> but anyways, thank you so much, everybody, for queuing in to Will's very first q and I hope that you all enjoyed his answers, my answers, our answers. And um, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. Goodbye. Bye.